changed me. Now I'm a chaser of his presence. See, I knew about religion, but it never did any good. I, too, I saw too many people carrying a Bible, and they were hypocrites. And the lack of that is because no God's presence. Oh, they might know the word, but they didn't know his presence. See, you can write a letter to someone and communicate. But until you finally meet them in their presence, there's a difference. I think some of us need a little endurance to press through. Those, he says, when you seek me with all your heart, you'll find me. Not half heart, not quarter heart, all your heart. That's why we worship. We worship to get to a place to cross over. Because when there's a crossover, there's no more you. No more you. And you're free. You're refreshed. You're filled. You can walk away healed, delivered, and free. But it's our responsibility to cross over. Jesus paid the crossover price for me and you. Now we must carry that price. Because there is a price to life. It isn't free. He paid the price. Now we got to fulfill the requirements to maintain it. Amen? Hallelujah. So good morning and welcome to Sunday Morning Live. Today we gather together, we gather together every Sunday, but today we celebrate God's resurrection over death. You know, there was an exchange made, his death for our life. What an honor. I mean, what an honor. So we're going to talk through some of the scriptures today, what the Lord has to say. In 1 Corinthians 15, if you don't have a Bible, you can ask for one. Or you can move over to someone and read it. The Word of God is worth the drive. Amen. It's live. See, if you don't read this, you don't know what's going on. There was a first thing in my visitation with the Lord when he came to visit me. His first words out of his mouth, of course, first he cast out all the demons and they came running. But his first words was, my Bible is true, guy. See, because I never believed the Bible. I believed in religion, but I didn't believe in the Bible. In fact, when you went to religious things, there's usually, you know, a couple scriptures, a couple ups and downs, throw your cash in a little thing and go home. But you didn't change. Only to God's presence can you change. It's his presence that changes you. It's his presence that invades every part of your being. It's his presence. And if you don't maintain his presence, you become religious again. Because your light begins to diminish. And darkness begins to take over. One compromise can hurt you. Thank God Jesus paid the price that when we do compromise, we repent. But if you don't know you've compromised, you're actually falling, going further and further into darkness, and the light's being blinded. And not only that, we become blinded. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 35. Hallelujah! We have a saying in our house, it's a good day to die. To yourself. We have a teaching called the shovel and the sword. <laughs> We have a website called Eternal Library. It's a wonderful website. It's got 15, 1,600 teachings on it and all kinds of things, courses. I encourage you to go there. Learn. Because if you don't learn, you're going to burn. You mean a Christian can't be saved the rest of his life? No. That's not God's doctrine. One saved, always saved. You think you're going to go out and accept Jesus Christ, go out and serve the devil and get home? Heck No. That's the doctrine of the devil, not the doctrine of my dad. He's coming for a blemish-free bride. Blemish-free. But I'm a good person. Good people don't go to heaven. That means they're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, not the tree of life. When there's righteousness, fruits, that's a difference. See, there's a sign on the entrance door of God's kingdom. Righteousness and justice. Not compromise. Not maybe. Not good. Righteousness and justice. Hold on to that. Please hold on to that because time is short. And God is bringing the whole body through deliverance. What you see going on right now is a shaking and awakening to get people into his kingdom to get them to cross over into his presence and not become religious. Because they won't make it. Remember the promised land out of millions. How many made it? Two from the original. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to stand before God and go, Yo, man, I did this and I did that. He's going to say, don't know you. 
Why, you, know, you, you rejected my voice all the time. You never entered my presence. I've invited you over and over and over, but you rejected it. That's a bummer. Verse 35, let's speak it together. Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. But someone will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one. What's foolish mean? It means you're deceived. Amen? Foolish one. Who told you that? You know? What you sow is not made alive unless it, it what? Unless it what? Oh, that's a requirement. It doesn't become alive unless you die. That's called the price of life. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be. But mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases. And to each one seeds its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of animals, another flesh of fish, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory of the celestial one is the glo uh, and the glory of the terrestrial one. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption and is raised in corruption. Yeah. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body and it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. And the last Adam, who is Jesus, became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth made of dust, and the second man is the Lord from heaven. And was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And also is the heavenly man. So also are those who are heavenly. As we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. That is powerful. We're going to bear the image of the heavenly man. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I tell you, mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we should all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, this is called the Feast of Trumpets. And the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast. That means consistent. Immovable. That means being alert. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Again, he says, not made alive unless it first dies. That's why there's a special word. The Lord gave us a formula. It's in Mark 8. There is a price of life. Everyone say price of life. Jesus paid the price so that we could get the life. Now we pay the price to maintain it. Amen? And Mark 8, 34. Mark 8, 34. Is everybody okay? Do we need to lock the door? Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, loosen up everyone now. You know, it's just, we're not religious. Amen. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and in his presence is fullness of joy. Listen, we, there should be no Christian that's not drunk. 
Everybody should be drunk in the spirit. There should be no straight Christians. If you're miserable, go home, tell nobody you know Jesus. Don't tell them you know Jesus because they're not my daddy. Go home till you get filled and delivered. And get your butt out of the closet and get in God's presence then. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't be a compromiser. Consistency is a key. It's a key. See, the enemy loves to prevent people from assembling. Look at what's going on in the world. Didn't they try to prevent it all over the world? They succeeded. You know how many people have gone back to the world? You know how many people became alcoholics and drug addicts because of, I mean, look at what they do. They left open the liquor stores. You don't think, you think God would do this? Okay, let's close everything down and keep the liquor stores open. That was the enemy. It was a false flag. This plague garbage is done and over with. Everybody's had the flu at least once, but they're going to name it Corona or Budweiser, whatever they want to name it. Amen? But it's over with. The masks are over. Thank God for Florida. And we got a righteous man in Florida. It's too bad for California and New York and all those blue demonized states. It's unfortunate. But God's going to remove them and take change. Things are happening. But we must stand strong. We must warfare in prayer. It's up to the body. See, the body's been too lazy too long ago. Or else we'd have never been in this circumstance. They should have been calling fire down in all those places already. Casting out those demonic influences. But anyways, we got a job to do. Amen? Praise God. Verse 34, let's speak it. Now when he, Jesus, called the people to himself, with his disciples also he said, are you ready for the formula? Whoever desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. That's called the price of life. And pick up the cross. It means fight. If you ever pull the cross out of the ground, it becomes a sword. Amen? And follow. See, there's no follow without fight. Everyone say no follow. No fight. There's always got to be a fight to follow because there's constant resistance. Even your flesh hates God's presence. Amen? For whoever desires to save his life is going to lose it. This is the difference between someone who lives, a, the world lives in a survival mode. The kingdom lives in a surrender mode. We don't have to survive. We're eternal. We live from the future to the present, not from the past. The world lives from the past to the present because they're carnal. They're soulish. They're fleshly. They're still fighting for their life, not learning how to surrender it. You can only surrender your life in God's presence. The more presence of God in your life, the more you surrender. Then the word of God becomes food to you. And as it becomes food, you begin to get stronger. And then you want God's presence. See, the word should always draw you to God's presence, not away from it. If it's not drawing you to God's presence, then something's not right. So we worship to get into God's presence to cross over. I can only tell you that in this, you'll know whether you have a spirit or not. The first thing you begin to think of, it's too long. It's too long. I can't do this stuff. Who told you that? I get people to tell me, you know, your services are too long. And I tell them, you got a demon. And it's irritated. Because it can't handle God's presence. A Christian can't have a demon? Really? I'm speaking to one right now. Listen, we cast out of demons out of more Christians than unchristians. Where do you think they want to go? Hello? Oh, I've never heard that doctrine. You need to read the Bible once in a while and find out. Oh, happy days. Thank you, Jesus. Again, verse 35, whoever desires to save his life is going to lose it. For my, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake is going to save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man, will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. See, to deny yourself to fight is to pick up the cross and follow. That is the process of the price of life. See, we've been, we've been brought up in such a, a, a demonic doctrine in, in so many areas. How many of you know God never started denominations? 
You know how denomination started? I'm going to tell you. When the Lord called 500 disciples to come up to the upper room, only 120 showed up. The other started denominations. Does everybody get it? Why? Because they weren't filled with the Spirit. Then they tried to improve God by their names. They started organizations. Listen, I don't care if you're Baptist, Protestant, I don't care what, Catholic, or lost. That's even a denomination, amen? There's only one way home, and that's through Jesus Christ. Your organization, your pastor, your parents, your friends can't bring you home. When you stand before God, it's you and him. That's it. And he's going to say, what would you do with this life I gave you? That's accountability. We are getting closer and closer and closer. God is now taking some people out of his way. There are people that are going home now that he knows isn't going to make it. He's bringing them home. There's a deliverance going through the body of Christ right now. He's shaking the body. We've already had the first world win which is exposing all wickedness. The second world world is in effect right now, which is dropping provision, strategy, strategy, and preparation. Why? Because he's preparing to come and take the bride home. That is the third world win. If he came right now, there'd be too many people left behind. Too many people. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Glory. Hallelujah. First Corinthians six, verse twelve. We also have penetrating prayer books. Please take them with you. You know, you can give somebody a Bible to look at and go, what am I going to do with it? <laughs> but you give them a penetrating prayer book that gives them a weapon. It's got directions and everything so they can at least start because the enemy comes to someone right away. Verse 12, let's speak it. All things are what? Lawful for me, but, not all, but all things are not what? Helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of what? Any. It's foods for the stomach. And the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall we, I then take these members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he was joined to the Lord as one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside of the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Everyone say, I'm not my own. This is what the Lord says, you know what? Too many people make decisions without me. The word says acknowledge him in all of your ways. Man, if you truly want a relationship, there's a communication constant. Lord, what do you think? How should I do this? Do you want me to go? Do you want not want me to go? You know why people don't feel assemble? Because they're not listening to God. They're listening to their soulish realm and the flesh. They're putting everything before God's presence. Can you trust those individuals? No. Or do you not know that the bo your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in, God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. <laughs> Again, we were bought. We were brought from the devil, bought by God from the devil through the blood of Christ and his sacrifice. Jesus had to become qualified to get into hell. He couldn't just enter hell. He had to take all of man's sin to become a sinful man 
even a man of purity, but he had to take on man's sin to go into hell. But when he got there, he said, good morning. I'm back. He stuck out his hand. The devil had to bow before him and give him the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He took those keys and then he went over to the area in the chamber where everybody had been. He said, look, can anyone follow me? Come on out. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you're willing to follow me, come out. You know, some people still stayed there because they believe the voice of the devil. There are people that are serving the devil right now because they think he's God. Because they're rich and they're wealthy and all kinds of other stuff. Because they've sold their souls out. So they think he's God because of their fame here. But there ain't no fame in hell. In fact, there's not one unbeliever in hell. Everyone that's there now is a believer. Unfortunately, it's too late. And hell is growing more and more and more. Hmm. Jesus definitely had to be qualified. Amen? And he took it all. Now, we as his followers, amen, we are servants of his life. And we are also declarers of his life. We are carriers of his life. This is eternal life, not temporary life. See, the earth is associated in this realm with physical. There's the word world, which is associated with spiritual. The essence of life is light. God is light. Light. So you got to look at God as being light. He's, light is what went into darkness, ripped them all out, blinded them all. Yo! That's when the devil handed over everything. He couldn't handle the presence of God, the light of God. See, that's why people who are, many of them are still in darkness. Darkness blinds a person. You know, think about Adam and Eve for a second. I'm going to try and go as quick as possible. But think about Adam and Eve. Now, God walked with them in the garden. There was no, day and night was associated with time. But there was no darkness and they didn't go to night. They didn't sleep. They didn't need to. They were eternal beings. Amen? They walked with God in the garden. But when they blew it, and they had to be removed from the garden. I mean, they were walking on fresh grass. Stayed cut without nobody cutting them. Fruits were smelling the flowers. Everything was phenomenal. There was Jesus. There was the angels. There was, they saw everything they saw. They saw the serpent who is shape-shifting on them every day. And you were a serpent yesterday. Today you're an angel of light. And all of a sudden they partook of what they weren't supposed to partake. I'm not going into that. And the Lord said, everybody out of the pool. Whew. Out they went. When they left the garden, they entered desert. Rough ground. Rocks. They wept bitterly. They were devastated. They wanted to die. And then when night came, they never saw night. Never saw night. They went into a cave to protect themselves. As it got darker and darker, they freaked out. Adam, where are you? Eve, where are you? See, they never lost each other. Because darkness separated them. That's what it's going to be like. People will go to hell. There'll be no light. That's all they'll do is hear screams, groaning, cries. That's what it's like there. You can't see because darkness now rules. And from that point on, darkness ruled the earth. But then the light came. Hallelujah. The true light. There was a witness of light, but then the true light came. Does everybody understand? Can you imagine that pain, that suffering? You don't think the devil tried to kill Adam and Eve afterwards? Sure he did. He brought them through the same things. That he brought Jesus in all temptations. They cried to get back to the garden. They cried. Lord, let us have a fruit of the garden. Let us drink. The water was pure and clear. Everything else was contaminated now. They left that place. They were moved. They begged to come back. Lord, take us. Take us. 
than the earth got ruled under darkness. The Lord said to them, I will return you, Adam, to the garden in 5,500 years. Give me 5,500 years, Adam. Then they changed everything. Darkness changed everything. I mean, really, we don't even know what year we're in. We can only assume. Does everybody understand? Now they got demonic weeklies. Now they got a, a pagan god for every day of the week. It's not, it's not, God's, it's not God's calendar. Everything is demonically run. Everything. But thank God for Jesus for paying the price, opening that veil, and let us have communication with the Father, and then releasing His Spirit. Remember, Jesus was the only one who could come and fulfill the feast. The only thing that is time towards God is His feast days. And there were seven feasts of the Lord, and they were to be fulfilled. Jesus came to fulfill the first three feasts, Passover, Feast of Unleavened, and first fruits. Ten days later, he came back to fulfill the first, the Feast of Pentecost. That's where he would send his light to each and every one. His true light. The next feast to be fulfilled is called the Feast of Trumpets. That's the body of Christ being removed from the earth. Then we have the Feast of Atonement. Feast of Tabernacles. There's seven feasts that only Jesus can fulfill. So we got Three feasts left. Three. But the next feast is a removal of the church. Home. Don't miss the bus. Amen? First John chapter 1. The price of life. First John chapter 1. In verse 5, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is what? God is what? Light. And in him is no darkness at all. So there's no gray. Amen. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we what? Oh, we lie. Oh, I know Jesus. Why well, just repent every Monday morning after partying all weekend? You don't have fellowship. Oh, I just say whatever I feel. I do whatever I feel. That's called the doctrine of the devil. Do what they feel like. So you're living for yourself. Then you're not his. Hello? If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. And we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Christ, his son, Jesus, cleanses us from all sin. When we what? Repent. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. God is light. Fellowship is in the light, not in gray, in light. Amen? Romans 13. Listen, we're not here together today by coincidence. Amen? Somehow God got you here. <laughs> Regardless of what. So you could hear what he wanted to tell you. And so things can get tightened up. So houses get put, can put in order. Verse 11. Knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep. Everybody here knows somebody that's a Christian that's got, basically gone to sleep backslidden, out of order. They're asleep. Why? Darkness has taken over their light. Their light is diminished now. For now, salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. 
Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry, drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its desires and wants of the lust. So he says, put on light. In other words, fellowship with light, put on the light. And take off darkness. In 2 Corinthians 5. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse one. The price of life, the price of eternal life. You know, Jesus came to bring us life and life abundantly. Second Corinthians five verse one. And we know that if our earthly house's tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life or by light. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us a spirit as a guarantee. Is the spirit light? Yeah. So we are always confident knowing that while we are uh, at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. See, the carnal walks by sight. When you're walking in the spirit, you're no longer looking at the things of tangible. You're looking for the things of looking through them as tangible. You know what's influencing. You're not looking at people. You're looking at the influence of them. Does everybody understand? There's a difference. You have now eyes. I call it night vision. Because you're able to see into the darkness and through. You're able to see through things. You're able to see intents of hearts. Doesn't mean you expose it all. Amen. You only expose what God tells you to expose. But in this, there's a difference. A big, big difference. For we do not walk by what? Faith. I mean, we walk by faith, but not by sight. We are confident, yes, well, please rather be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well, pleasing to him. For we will all appear before the judgment seat. Nobody gets away with it. That each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust we are well known in your conscience. We desire to be fuller clothed with God's habitation, more light, more light, more light. We groan inside. Sometimes you're struggling and don't know what you're struggling about. Gosh, I don't know what's going on with me, man. I'm just struggling. It's because you're groaning. And you're looking at, gosh, what did I do wrong? You didn't do anything wrong. Just a groaning in you. Go, oh, man, I want more. I want more, but you don't understand that. The carnal mind can't comprehend those things. But there's a desire in you to want more of God's presence. Want more. Again, the end result is everyone is going to appear before God. Even these individuals that are out there serving the devil and well, nobody gets away with it. Nobody. Even good people, bad people, righteous people, everybody's going to stand before God. Nobody gets away with it. Ephesians 4, please. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 1. Let's speak it. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Better to be a prisoner of the Lord than a prisoner of the devil, right? <laughs> I beseech you to walk worthy of your calling with which you were called. With all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. 
Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and one Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But each one of us grace was given according to the measure of God's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captive, captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this is, he ascended, what does it mean that, but he first what? Descended into the lower parts of the earth, which we just talked about. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fulfill all things. In other words, these gifts is the gift of the Spirit. Remember when he ascended, 10 days later, he released the Holy Spirit, the baptism. See, there's too many believers who have not been baptized in the Holy Ghost yet. I received the Holy Ghost when I got saved. No, you didn't. You got the Holy Spirit, but you ain't been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Does everybody understand? There's a difference. Why? Because now you're walking in power. You have the authority to cast out devils. You can see through the natural into the spirit. You speak another language that speaks directly to God, and he speaks back to you. Only in the spirit is a relationship. True relationship. He required, that's why he said, man, I command. He commanded his disciples, man, go to the upper room till you're slammed. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Again, only 120 listened. They didn't start the nominations. The other ones did. Because they're always trying to improve God. The other ones were led by the Spirit. The disciples didn't have a Bible. Amen. They didn't have nothing. They had the Holy Spirit to lead them in everything they did. I, 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 I taught in the jails for 14 years, 15 years. When I come in there, sometimes I say, everybody put your Bibles away. What do you mean put my Bible? Put them away. Let's worship the Lord. We'd be worshiping and somebody pull out a Bible, I'd go and kick it out of their hand. That's offensive to my father. You're to get in his presence. See, there's so people have been trained to go to the Bible instead of God's presence. Does everybody understand? Look at I love the word. Don't get me wrong. But knowing the word without his presence is nothing but seed. You need the sword of the Spirit. You need to be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to get your heavenly language where you're connected. This is not a religious operation. It's a military operation. So many individuals I've spoken to, I've told them, man, you need to, you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I love the Lord. Well, if you love them, get more of them. You know, a lot of people say they love them, but there's still sin. Anybody can say they love their car. I love this, I love that, I love... They throw love around like it's, you know... I get people, oh, I love you. No, you don't. You hate me. Tell me you love me. You can't stand me. Because I irritate you. And it's not me that irritates you. It's the Spirit of God that irritates you. You think you hate me, but it ain't me. People blame me for all their sins sometimes, I'm telling you. But to God be the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. John 12. I don't mind irritating people. I like to see devils manifest. Verse 35. You should too. If you're filled with the Spirit of God, man, you want to expose every demon. Verse 35, 1235. Hallelujah. Then Jesus said to them all, is everybody there? A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. That's where people are making wrong decisions. Wrong choices, wrong purchases, getting themselves in debt. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may be, that you may be become the what? Sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. But although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe him. Because the devil will come and steal. 
that the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? See, one of the things the devil wants you to do is never reach your identity. See, there are too many believers who still don't know who they are yet. They want to be someone, but they don't know who they are yet. See, wanting to be and being is a different thing. Or some of the individuals, see, the first thing the devil steals is your identity. As he begins to steal your identity, your light begins to diminish and more and more darkness begins to take over. Again, it takes one compromise for diminishing of the light. That's why when you compromise, you must repent quickly. Lord, forgive me. The blood always goes before the spirit. Repentance activates the blood of Christ. We want to be sons of light, don't we? God's not coming back for the sons of darkness, that's for sure. Isaiah 42. About 30 more scriptures and we'll be done. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Isaiah 42. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Behold my servant who is Jesus whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. I put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. He will not cry out nor raise his voice, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, a smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. He will not fail nor be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and in the coastline shall wait for his law. Thus says the Lord who created the heavens and, the, and, the, uh, and stretched out them all, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and the spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness, and I will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you a covenant to the people as a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will not give to another. My praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare before they spring forth, I tell you them. Jesus is the servant. He is now the new covenant Amen. He brought us a ministry of the Spirit now. He's making everything new from the time he paid the price. Pulling people out of darkness. Listen, I was in prison. I was in the darkness for many years. He pulls us out. He sends invitations. It's unfortunately not everybody grabs the invitation. Sometimes they got to eat more dirt. I've rejected the invitation multiple times. I was run over, all kinds of, I got dragged through bushes, you name it, until I finally surrendered. Of course, there was, I couldn't, I had nothing left. He was the only one there. But he was the servant that came and paid the price, Isaiah 53. God sent him for me and you. That's the price of life. Now we must fulfill that price by walking upright, following him. And fulfilling the formula that is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. There's a wonderful thing that the Lord waits for me and you every morning. He waits for our voice to acknowledge him. He waits for us to get into his presence and pray. He waits for us to get the full armor of light on. He waits for us every morning. And so many people just get out of bed, go drink their coffee, eat their food, and go to work. And the Lord's like, hey, wait, a minute. what about me? What about me? Oh, Lord, thank you for today. What about me? No relationship. None. He's demanding a relationship now. Only those who abide in the secret place are protected. Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of the dry ground. 
He has no form or comeliness when we see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. God afflicted his own son himself. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. What a price. And we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid it on him. The iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. As a sheep before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of many people. He was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked. But with the rich at his death. Because he did not know violence. Nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put on him to grief. When you made his soul an offering to sin, he shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities, therefore I will divide him a portion with the great. He shall divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That's Jesus. He paid the price for me and you. There is a price of life. 1 Corinthians 15. In verse 20. Everybody okay? You learning anything? Got to learn or you what? Amen. We've been burned enough. Amen. First Corinthians 15 verse 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead. And has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. He's fulfilled the feast of first fruits. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die... Even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one his own order. Christ the first fruits. And afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom of God to the Father. When he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be defeated is death. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. So people have been deceived by this false plague. Have people died from the flu? Yes. But of course, they're going to name it. They're going to, let me tell you, they lie like crazy. I, I was in New York, and people were telling me how bad Florida was. I said, you're, 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 who told you that? The news here. I mean, the bail news? I'm like, Nobody's in the hospital. What are you talking about? It's just amazing to me. And how people are listening to the news. When it's lying news. It's fake news. Even the President Trump kept trying to tell people. They're fake. They're fake. People weren't listening. And they're still not listening. If they weren't listening, they'd definitely be rebellion in New York. They'd be saying, Done. Arrest us all. Arrest the whole country, or the whole state. Come on, arrest us all. What are you going to do with us all? Put us in nursing homes? They could have revival. <laughs> Praise God. 
first fruits. God is the first fruit, and those who follow him are, in other words, he's fulfilling the feast of first fruits, and the next feast is to be fulfilled as trumpets. In Matthew 25. Oh, we're almost done. You know, and, he, and when in the book of Acts, Paul got all the people together and they put all their witchcraft books together and they burned them. People need to put their masks together and start burning them. Matthew 25, verse 1. Let's speak it. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. The virgin is one who's cleansed by the blood. has become a believer. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. In other words, five were wise, five were deceived. Amen? Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. In other words, they were not filled with the Spirit. They kept rejecting to fellowship. They kept rejecting to get filled with God and come to worship. They kept rejecting to press over and press in. They rejected it. They were called foolish because they were deceived. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they also all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. In other words, you can't buy anybody else's oil. You must purchase your oil through worship. And while they went to go by, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. And afterwards, the vir other virgins came along, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered and said to them, Surely I say to you, I do not know you. Why? God knows his presence. God knows his presence. He knows that carry his presence. He knows those that carry his light. Many of them would come to him and say, Lord, we cast out devils. We did this. See, many of them knew his word, but they didn't have his presence. There's a difference. That's what the enemy wants to do. Oh, I can just stay home and read my Bible and do nothing. No presence. No worship. No power. There's no power without God's presence. You can't overcome temptation. Submit to God, then you're able to resist the devil. Amen? He says, look, I'm not, I don't know who you I know my presence. I know my people. I know those that, those that thirst and hunger for my righteousness. I know those that seek me with all their heart. I know them. But the others, I don't know. He said, therefore, watch, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Go to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Hallelujah. When the word says bless, it's associated with worship. When the word says bless the Lord, it means worship the Lord. Bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is with me, and bless his holy name. Worship. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his benefits. Listen, you won't forget those things when you're, God's presence is with you and you're in God's presence. The more you're in God's presence, the more he's in you then things come quickly to remembrance. And forget not his benefits. How many of y'all know God's got benefits? Look at He forgives all your iniquity. What a benefit. He heals all your diseases. See, he's got his own insurance plan. He redeems your life from destruction. He's a protector. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. What a dad. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Thank God. Changes your tongue. So that you, your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise God. You can stay 33 forever. Don't forget these benefits that he paid for resurrection and life. And I'm going to close at Revelation 20. The price of life.
He paid the price. Now we pay the price to keep it. Revelation 20, verse 1. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, set a seal on him, so that he should deceive mankind and the nations no more, till the thousand years are finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the what? First resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such a second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for one thousand years. We will have a glorified body then. You can go to and fro. Your home will actually be in the most holy of holy of holies, the temple of God. It's called Jerusalem. There will be a physical Jerusalem and a spiritual Jerusalem. That will last for 1,000 years. You have a glorified body. You don't need to hitchhike home. You don't need to wait for a bus. You don't need to Uber. You're just going to think it and boom, you're there. You will have a glorified body, no blood. Thank God. No flesh, no desires. You're brand new. You'll be in the image of God. You'll be just like his son. What an awesome thing. I always tell people you can play tennis on both sides. You can underwater with no gear. You can go anywhere. But the rest of the, of the products, that are, those that are not saved won't see that. And after a thousand years, this place is cooking. Gone. Done. Then we go with the Lord, and whatever he decides to roll out new, we're with him. What an awesome thing to look forward to. We need to teach our children these things. Encourage them that there's more than just here. More than just life here. But that we carry eternal life in our, in our being, our, in light. And to carry that light to the world. Time is short. You are called. Amen. You have a purpose and you have a destiny. Let the Spirit of God fulfill it in each and every one of us. That we may bring glory to his name, knowing that we are heaven bound in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask that you protect this seed and not let the devil steal it today. And that you prepare each and everyone's heart for receiving communion with you. And that you would bring up your tithes and offerings and offer it to the Lord in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.